Hello and now welcome back. In the previous lecture you learned how to modify the virtual environment in A-Frame and in this lecture we are going to have a look at how to customize the camera using the A-Camera primitive which determines what the user sees. And now that you know how to create the ground in your scene I'll talk a bit more about positioning entities so you can better understand how the camera works in A-Frame. And to do this I'm going to add a couple of primitives to our scene. I'll start with the cylinder. So a cylinder primitive, color red, radius 0 0.5, height 2, and I move it 2 meters to our left, so position component, minus 2, 0 and 0. Then I add a box. So a box a primitive. Color green. Height 2. Depth 4. And I move it 2 meters to our right. So position component 2. 0 and 0. And as you notice, when I changed the dimensions of the 3D objects, they extended their size along both the directions of each axis. Therefore, to make them sit at the ground level, we need to move them up by changing the y-axis value in the position component to half the value of their height. That is 1 meter. Now, as you can see in our scene, the default viewport is above the ground. And even if I create a camera, using the A camera primitive, the camera origin is a 0 and 0 on the X and Z axis. But this specific height still comes as a default setting. And you might think that this depends on some default values of the position component, but actually the way in which the camera behaves is due to other reasons. Indeed, like all the other entities in A-Frame, the camera origin point is at zero on the X, Y and Z axis. But this happens only when entering a VR mode. And I mean when a proper VR headset is connected to the PC returning its absolute position. Whereas when not in VR mode, but in desktop mode. The camera has a height offset of 1.6 meters to approximate the average height of the human eye level. I'm going to add this image to our scene as a reference and I downloaded the original illustration by ddraw from freepeak.com where you can find a lot of cool graphic resources for your projects that you can use for free but just make sure to credit the author and not to redistribute nor to sell their work. Ok, I go back to our live preview now and I'm going to copy and paste the code for the A image primitive to display the reference image to which I attach a meter for our convenience, so you can see the camera height offset matching the average height of the human eye level. Now, this offset is convenient for two reasons. First, it makes it possible to create experiences that work both in and out of VR. And second, it makes VR experiences look decent from a desktop screen even if a connected VR headset was resting on the floor, which would result in the viewport clipping the ground. And this default value of 1.6 meters is not set in the position component, but in the HTML attribute user height. I'm adding a comment to specify that this camera is set to the average height of adult eye level. And if you'd like to place the camera to a different position, let's say 5 meters back, this is what you don't want to do. Be 
because as you can see it creates a conflict with the user height or what the absolute position of the connected VR headset would be and so the controls will quickly override the set position. And instead the correct way to manually position the camera is to set the position component on a wrapper entity that as you learned in lecture 10 where we broke primitives down is going to behave just like an empty div. So I remove the position component and reload the page. Then I add the A entity element. I nest the A camera primitive inside it. And finally I attach the position component to the A entity. And if I play around with its values, you can see that the manual positioning works as expected. Well, we can now go back to the user height attribute and talk a bit more about its importance when it comes to designing a virtual experience. When we had a look at basic primitives in lecture 4, you learned that it's important to consider the real-world scale of the entities you create. And this is even more important when you design for specific users. In example, the objects in our scene may look normal to an adult, but what about kids? What does the VR experience look like if you put yourself in their shoes? So let's modify the user height value to 0.9 and find it out. Well, what was quite normal to an adult now looks impressive through the eyes of a kid. Or what if you were designing a VR project that allows the user to experience and interact with the world from the viewpoint of a baby that is just 30 centimeters above the ground? And as you can see, depending on the height of the user eye level, the dimension and the position of the same 3D objects in your scene can play different roles and make the user feel different emotions. I'll set the user height back to its default value and reload the page. And then I'm going to conclude this lecture with uh, multiple cameras. Because, yes, you can create more than one camera in your scene to provide the user with more than one viewpoint. But always bear in mind that you should never change the viewport, as well you should never teleport the user to a different place in your scene without making them aware of what is going to happen. In this way you'll be able to avoid the sickness, disorientation and other unpleasant feelings that you don't want your users to experience. So basically you should give the user the possibility and the option to perform these type of actions deliberately and we'll have a look at how to interact with the objects later on in this course. Ok then, and for the moment I'm just going to create a copy of this camera. I modify its comment and the user height value. And so in example like they did with the video game Grand Theft Auto V, you could give the user the possibility to switch to a different character in your scene. And once you attach the active HTML attribute, as its name suggests, you can control which camera in the scene is the active camera. So I set this value to false, and the first camera's value to true. 
And you can change the attribute value either via JavaScript or in the HTML with the event set component that again we'll have a look at in the next lectures. Or as a last example, you could create another camera to provide the user with the option of kind of an aerial camera, like they did with the Eagle Vision in the video game Assassin's Creed Origins, where you can explore and view the 3D environment from the Eagle's perspective. So in this case, you don't need the user height. You can set the camera's position, let's say, to 5 meters above the ground. And let's have a look at our scene from here. So this is how you can modify and control the A camera primitive in A frame to design your custom scenes, bearing in mind how different heights and viewpoints will create different relationships between the 3D objects and the user and therefore impact their feelings and emotions in different ways. There is much more that you can do to further customize the virtual environment and for this I'll see you in the next lecture.